in the human scene, faith is the source of the reliable messages that we need to have a complete picture. Especially in types, terms of life's deepest mysteries. Where do we come from? What are we here for? Where are we going? And it is a matter of faith. If you've ever stood at the side of the grave, you know what faith is. It takes faith, you know. There's nothing as absolute as death or as final. And here the priest, you know, rattling off the prayers. I'm the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me will never die. Well said, Father. Well said. But it can be very difficult in such a time. So in the end, we, we succumb to the grace of faith. The temptation is, of course, to follow the senses, reason, feelings, whatever. That's the end. There's no more. It's over and out. We come, we go. That's it. No. The message is faulty, not complete. The message that faith gives is entirely different. Now, if an ill person needs another to trust in his judgment and does so, if a pilot must fly, fly blind in total reliance on his instruments, so human existence can only be whole and sound and sane when we live with total reliance on what our faith tells us. We fly blind on faith, in faith, you know. We, we're not like Thomas. Thomas wouldn't believe until he had the evidence, until I see the hands and the side. Then I'll believe. Well, in that case, Jesus took him up on it and appeared a week later and then called out, Thomas. And of course, Thomas collapsed. My Lord and my God, yeah. You see, and therefore believe. Blessed those who don't see, and who believe. Blessed those who don't see, and believe. He's talking to us. You know, it was, if we think we are naive to, uh, that, that blind trust in another, or in our instruments is easy, it isn't easy. It takes great courage, and the grace of faith, you know. When all the evidence tells me, I can see him behind the window and the curtain, the wiggle. I know he's there. Every body and every bone of my body is telling me I'm flying sideways. I was once in the, in the pines, the barrens in New Jersey with my cousin, going to the shore at night, and the barrens is pine trees in swamps, miles and miles and miles of nothing, just blackness. And I had the strangest delusion, we're going downhill. And I thought, we can't be going downhill, there is no, are we going downhill? Well, how could we go on downhill? But I felt it in every bone of my body, we were going downhill. And then I thought, well, that's how a pilot can get confused in the dark. He's certain he's going down, and he ain't. And every move he makes is fatal. One disaster leads to another. It's a gift of God, though, your faith. So don't go bragging on it, you know, it's given. We didn't earn it, we don't deserve it, and it's surely not given for merit. Are we better than others? I don't get that impression. <laughs> <laughs> but for whatever reason, God gave us the faith, and therefore we were under some obligation to respond to it. And in doing so, have an awareness that it matters for others who don't have what I have. We're in this together, honey. It's a communal endeavor. You're not going to heaven alone any more than you're here on your own tonight alone. Don't kid yourself. Who subsidized it? Who paid for it? Who prayed for it? You have no idea, neither have I. We think we're here on our own. <laughs> we're suffering from a delusion. Later in the next life, we'll find out and so, on the other hand, we too should be generous in prayer and in faith, prayer, trust in faith, in faith, 
<clears throat> our prayer matters for the rest of the human family. Our brothers and sisters, our contemporaries that we're going to be identified with forever. We were here together. And I want to make it plain that I remembered them. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, I'm nobody. Ah, he's the son of God. Right? <clears throat> so, the faith then it, it means that we use the gift for others. I, I come from Boston, and when you're in Boston, I mean Milton. Milton is just south of Boston. We had a lot of wealthy people up on Milton Hill. Old money. Old money means taught their kids two things. Don't go around apologizing for being wealthy. It's no sin. Hold your head up. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Entitlement is the word. You're entitled to what you have. So don't go around, you know, apologizing. Second, you're under obligation to use it for the common good. You hear that? You're under obligation to use it for the common good. I'm not recommending big money, but I give them credit. Many of them did. Boston's a good town. You know, they use their wealth for the common good. Opera, ballet, symphony, museums, parks, arboretums, colleges, universities, hospitals, etc. Well, you've got more than money. You have the faith, and you have power through the faith in your intercession with God. Why be stingy then? Don't go around apologizing for being Catholic. Hold your head up, you know. And on the other hand, you're under obligation to use it for the common good. And in any case, that's your own salvation because when you're generous like that, the bread comes back that you threw on the waters. So, we're not to be like Thomas, who was very enthusiastic as a believer once he had the evidence. No, we walk in dark valleys. We walk in times of confusion and, and disappointment, suffering and sadness, and a lot of stuff that we can't account for. And somehow we manage to hang on to our faith and in the end know that it'll all come together in the end. And you, uh, you're exposed to more of it than I am because you're more in touch with things that are going on. It can get pretty rough. And you wonder, is there a God? And if there is, does he care? And in the final analysis, do I really matter? Well, there is a God, and he does care. And we do matter. And we use even that suffering uh, in union with his for the good of the world. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.